One of the most difficult parts of my job and my work within the drowning prevention area is to sit across the table from a parent like Amber or Nicole or Morgan and Bodie Miller or any parent who's lost their child to a drowning and once again I hear them say I just didn't know. And then within three or four weeks their other children are swimming and rolling over to float. It's very difficult, it's very sad and I've seen just unbelievable courage and strength from these people, these parents turning their grief into helping other children, but the sad part is they're not coming back. No matter how hard they try or what they do, it's, it's so preventable. And I watch it, and I watch these parents for years live in what they describe as an emotional prison, and we gotta change it. our son River to a drowning in 2019 in our backyard. I love you so much. So today is our first day with Maverick with ISR, Infant Swim Resource or Infant Swim Rescue. I've been talking about this for a really long time. It's been something that I've been thinking about since we had our tragedy with River. And I knew going forward that this is something that I, would, I was gonna have to put Maverick in. He is eight months this week. Joanne Barnett, who is the CEO of Infant Swim Resource, has so graciously offered to come and teach Maverick. And also Nicole Hughes, who was one of the first moms to reach out to me after we lost Riv, is flying with her four kids in town to be with me, to be by my side. She has put two of her children through ISR and now she's gonna be here to hold my hand, so to speak, as we go through this, because I know it's gonna be a little emotional, but I know it's one of the best gifts that you can give your kids is the ability to self-rescue in the water. Hi, Louie! Yay! Of course! Get all this later, but... I'm Nicole Hughes, and my husband and I, we live in Tennessee, and we have five children. Um, and in June of 2018, we were on vacation on a trip we took every, um, every year for over a decade. Our, at the time, our three-year-old son, Levi, um, he was our third child. He somehow, we were cleaning up from dinner, we had finished swimming for the day, um, and he somehow slipped out of the, the kitchen door, um, and he reached the pool um, alone. We thought we were doing everything right when it came to water safety. We had six physicians on our trip, including my, my husband, who's a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist, and Levi was fully intubated immediately. I mean, they had an airway kit. I mean, even the ambulance, you know, when they arrived, they were like, we're just gonna stand over here. I mean, he had the best possible immediate response, and he was unable to be saved. So you must be Maverick and Amber. Yes. Nice to meet you, finally. Nice to meet you. This is Maverick's first day, and if you want to just hand him over, I'll I'll talk you through the lessons, and I'd love it for you to sit right here, okay. too. And that way you can feel free to ask questions, and I'll sort of explain how it's all going to work. First, I just wanted to get used to me a little bit. I want him to just be handed over, and then the next thing you do, you're having to do your floating, right? So one of the important things about the ISR program is initial presentation in the water is getting the baby to start to learn about the buoyancy of the water as opposed to thinking somebody's always going to be holding him and always and he's going to have some flotation device. Flotation devices and adults holding him have very little to do with information about what you really need to do in the water. So those types of things are like trying to teach a child to walk by physically moving his legs. Yeah. So children this age are wired to learn by just engaging the environment, just like they figure out how to walk on their own. They would also figure out how to swim, but they just went out of time. So. What we're going to do today is start to give him some realistic information about the water. Notice how my hands are nice and light on him, and I'm just letting him feel the water. And I'm letting him see, by a very light touch, how, just how his body feels in the water. Now right there, he just let his legs float up. That's telling us that he's starting to experiment with the buoyancy of water. So that's the first couple presentations. That's all it's going to be. There you go. 
And already, see how much of him is in the water? I don't want him to learn to trust a person, trust the water in himself once he knows how to handle it. Okay, now you see how he's throwing his head back like that? That's because children explore their environment. And then he'll see that he can't breathe like there. And then I'll, I'll assist him with correcting it. And that's how he's going to learn about it. So he didn't do it again. Right? So I'm just allowing him. I'm just controlling his experience, really. Perfect. He didn't throw his head back. See, this time he went to the right. You see how he turned that way? And that's exactly what he's supposed to do. Just where am I supposed to put my head and my body? And how do I get to stay here where I'm breathing? exactly what he's supposed to do. So what's significant about what you just saw is he was on his back for a lot longer and he never did this. So he's learned that doesn't work. So now he's starting to go side to side. So I'll put him on his side to show him and then guide him back. So if he were to roll face down, he'll start to understand that you have to come back this way. You did it by yourself for a second. One more time, you'll be done for today, Mom. You ready? You all right? Yeah. <laughs> See that action right there tells me he knows where the air is, just doesn't have enough experience to be expected to do it all. Yeah. As soon as he catches some good breaths, I'm going to put him on that towel and we'll wrap him up. Alright guys, we just finished his first lesson and as you all know, it was emotional for me because of our situation with River. But he did so good. He did so good his first lesson. He cried, of course, because it's all learning and he's he's learning what to do in the water. He's learning, He's like she said, he's testing things to see which way he can find the air. As you can see, he's fine now. He's fine now. Some people will say that it's traumatizing to the baby. Babies cry when you put them in car seats too and you have to protect them. And as hard as, as, hard as that first lesson was for me to watch, I know it's gonna be so good for him when he's floating and finding the air and he's when he's swimming by the time that he's two years old. So I'm ready for the next lesson. I know he's probably gonna cry for a few lessons, but I think I got some of my original emotion out of the way. So he's probably gonna sleep really good tonight. It's really, really important to allow them to experiment because that's what kids do. And that's how they learn. So our job as the instructor is to just watch what he's going to do and always guide him back to the safety of air and show him how to get there. He'll actually teach himself through proper guidance, which is really the structure of the lessons. You'll be surprised how quickly he'll do it all by himself. People use the word trauma often, but what they don't realize is from a psychological standpoint, trauma means that the individual perceives that there's no way out of a situation. Right. That's how trauma occurs. As you saw in his lesson today, that was never the case. Any little move he made successfully got him to air, yeah. which is why he's crying in the water because it's all new to him. But as soon as he's out, he's yeah. fine. I just noticed him probably swallowing a lot of water. So the goal is to teach breath control. Right. But in the first lesson, since it's short, we're going to let him just sort of try. Like he's never going to be under long enough to take in too much water. Yeah. The goal is definitely breath control. If he were, if he would have swallowed water, he would also spit it up. Right. So, but we can tell by bubbles trapped in his nose. And if he's face down and I see bubbles coming out, then I'll know. And if he isn't utilizing proper breath control, there's a technique to go back and teach that. I wasn't nervous coming, I think. And I think if I wasn't a mom who, who had experienced the trauma, I don't think I would be as emotional. Mm -hmm. But obviously what we've been through is just more emotional now. Of course. Which is why I, I have to, and it's such a gift. Not the crying, it's just seeing him I guess taking the water just reminded me of River, which is what we're trying to prevent, you know? So right. emotions on the first day are always gonna be yes. strong, but yes. I know that this is what I need to do for him, and I know that he's in the best hands, and I know that he's gonna learn, and he's gonna well. swim. One down, buddy. <laughs> My name's Joanne Barnett. I'm the co-founder of Infant Swimming Resource, commonly known as ISR. I've taught hundreds and hundreds of instructors to teach thousands and thousands of infants and young children. Infant Swimming Resource has been around since 1966. We've taught millions of lessons. We do know and we have proven that children as young as six months can roll over and float. And as soon as children can walk, they can also learn to swim to the side and attain the edge, look for safety and help themselves. But we also know that the responsibility of saving a child's life should not be on the child. The survival skills that we teach are emergency management. The accident is that the child gets to the pool in the first place. 
So in no way are we saying that ISR is the answer. We're saying it's one of many layers of protection, supervision being first, but we all know that supervision breaks down. If it didn't, we wouldn't have the drowning statistics that we have. So we need competent supervision, we need locks on the doors, we need fences around our pool, and we need to stop the practices that are teaching our children to drown. And what I mean by that is putting them in a flotation device and let them paddle around for hours in the pool, thinking that water's fun with zero ability to survive in it or teaching an unskilled child to jump off the side of the pool to daddy. What message does that send? As a culture, we send the message, water's fun, but if you can't swim, water's not fun. So we need to change our attitudes about it. So we just finished his third, less fourth lesson. Now, um, he worked a little harder today. He had started to really test the waters and roll over. So he did take in a little bit more water today. He spit up a little water today, so that made me nervous, but Joanne reassured me. Whereas a mom, I thought, oh, that's a lot of water. She looked at it and said, no, that, that's not a lot. That's just a little bit. And he got it right up and he was smiling right after the lesson. He was already making adjustments again and testing those waters. So he's doing really good and I'm doing good going through it, um, trust in the process and excited to show you guys the outcome. We have since had two other babies, and Willow is two, and Teddy is 16 months. And um, you know, I, we knew as soon as soon as I got pregnant with them that, that they would, that we would make sure they knew how to survive in the water. Um, that that you know, doing ISR was not negotiable for for our family. Watching them get that float and and know how to survive in water is so empowering as a parent to know that that we have. We have given them this, you know, I think <laughs> he's the best. And you know, that's what, and honestly, this is what it's about is these babies and this risk that honestly is involved with just from a love standpoint of how scary it is to have another baby, honestly, when you've lost one and, and everything that you will do to keep those babies safe. And, and so for us, for me to step out of my own comfort zone and say, I will make sure you are equipped with this, uh, you know, is so important. And when I watch my babies float, I think, you know, I just, every time I think about it, I just think, you know, water played its hand and now we're playing ours and we are in this to win. And that is what I see when I see them floating. <laughs> Okay, we are on our second to last lesson for Maverick for this session of lessons for ISR. And I am just so impressed at how far he's come since he started and how quickly he learns at this age to make adjustments and find the air. I'm, I'm shocked actually at how well he's making adjustments and learning. So we're gonna go for our second to last lesson today. And then tomorrow we're gonna do it in clothes. So. We're going to show you guys that ISR works and he is finding the air. Ready? tell he was a little bit more tired today we're kind of close to nap he didn't nap this morning but we have to practice whenever they're tired too because you never know when they might find the water but he still has a great float and we practiced him actually falling in and finding the air falling in too so we're gonna get a good nap and we're gonna come back tomorrow and we're gonna do it all in our clothes and then he'll be done for this lesson I don't think I knew what to expect I think you hear a lot of parents are afraid of ISR because they think you're hurting the baby but just seeing how far he's come and knowing that he can find the air if he accidentally falls in or crawls in or it's just it's I thought it would be more more emotional than it is but it's actually more empowering than anything just knowing that I'm giving him the skills to be able to find the air if he ever should make it to a body of water alone and we have to give our kids that we, we owe it to our kids to give them that so I'm so happy with his progress
and go get a nap. You're so sleepy. <laughs> I think the problem too is parents have all this information. You know, as a parent, you're always worried about all these different things. And there is only so much like mom brain worrying space, you know? So you have to prioritize and you have to find the loopholes. So I, I mean, you know, so I think you say, okay, drowning, watch my kids when they're swimming, put a puddle jumper on them, done. I don't have to worry about that. But like, imagine if they had the real information. It isn't supposed to be a scary thing. I mean, you know, look at Willow out there. She's swimming. Like she's, she's having so much fun. I mean, so the goal really is to, to, Give them those skills, give them the respect for water, and then and then let them have fun. It isn't supposed to be just some fear-mongering, anxiety-inducing thing about parents who can't ever be around water again. I mean, ISR has been the best thing that's happened to her, not only from a safety standpoint, but from a her life, her childhood is um, more full because of the fun she can have in the water with her sisters. This is Maverick's final lesson for this round of his learning to float and today we're doing it fully clothed with a diaper um, because we know some children, most children, reach the water um, and they're not supposed to be swimming. 80% of the children who find the water are not supposed to be swimming so they're not in swim trunks or they're usually fully clothed or have a diaper or shoes. So. We're gonna practice with his clothes on today and just make sure he's making good adjustments. Then we'll come back when he walk, when he's able to walk and we will do refresher courses and he'll learn new skills. So we'll just keep refreshing and keep teaching him and giving him the skills that he needs if he should ever find the water alone. So we're just equipping him with those skills and it's just been so empowering to watch. I don't think I was expecting him to make as much progress as he's done in such a short time. So sometimes I don't think we give our kids enough credit that um, Ms. Joanne says it's not her teaching, it's him learning and making adjustments on his own. It's giving them the skills they need. So, you ready? You ready? Okay, here we go. How do you do it? And I'm like, yeah, it's, <laughs> how do I feel empowered? I mean, I truly, I feel so empowered, so angry, so driven to make sure this doesn't happen to anybody else. Is what it is, you know? And. And I think that parent, people want to say, well, drowning, parents need to watch their kids. I mean, this is what everybody thinks drowning is. And of course, all of us who have experienced it know that's not what it is. But my husband said one time, um, it shouldn't matter anyway. Drowning doesn't happen to the parents. It happens to the child. And so we owe it to our children to prepare them. We are going to win. that drowning was the leading cause of accidental death for children one to four. We didn't know that drowning is so quick and so silent. We didn't know that you need multiple layers of protection. And we didn't know that we were missing one of the key elements of protecting our child. And that was giving them the skills they need to survive in the water. I don't want another mom or dad to have to bury their baby because they just didn't know. It's too late for River, and it's too late for Levi, but it's not too late for you, because now you know. <laughs> we need haircuts, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I love your face. Just us, buddy. You wanna go to school, Rev? Say bye-bye to Mama and go to school. I'll get more, Mama. Awesome. Ha 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 ha!